Open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter four. Attend to my words, put it first place, incline thine ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes. This is a big one. Let them not depart from thine eyes. You need to keep healing verses going into your eyes, going into your eyes so you begin to see yourself well instead of sick. See yourself walking instead of um, out of commission. See yourself out of debt Amen. instead of owing all that back taxes. Amen. You, and it takes a while because you've been seeing yourself night and day like that. You, you've been looking at yourself in the mirror of your own mind. And that's the way you keep seeing yourself, particularly if it's a long term thing. Keep them, don't let them depart from your eyes. I was in a meeting in Shreveport, Louisiana, and um, it's three weeks, three weeks long, 21 days two services a day on most days and three on some. And the, the Sunday night before the meeting started on Monday, Life Tabernacle Church in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, and the home church of Carolyn Savell, and in the church and in the meeting where, where Jerry Savell got saved. Anyway, uh, the Sunday night, Gloria and I got there, so we were in church Sunday night and the meeting started on Sunday, Monday morning. And I felt this, this tightening on the inside of my thigh, just above my knee there. It just felt like, like, like I had a, a, a rubber band or something around my leg. And it just started, it didn't gradually creep up. It just was there. It didn't hurt all that bad, but it just kind of tight. By the time church is over, uh, it, it is, it's talking to me. Now, I didn't say that like slang. Jesus walked up to that fig tree and he answered that tree and said, no man eat fruit of you. He answered it. The tree was talking. That tree said, no, nope. I don't care how hungry you are, you ain't getting nothing here today. Jesus said, okay. <laughs> he talked. You need to learn how to talk back. Particularly you sit down to your evening meal and you flip the television on and they start all of those prescription drug commercials while you're trying to eat. Turn BVOVN on and we won't, we won't bug you like that. <laughs> but they come on there, you know, and, and of course the person's got a smile on their face while the guy in the background saying, uh, here's, uh, <laughs> this stuff will kill you, brother. <laughs> and they're still smiling. <laughs> they come on there and say, you know, this is for whatever it is. You just holler back at that saying, say, there's heat for that and I'll never have that disease. Let the Word of God talk back to your television. All right, glory to God. Where was I? Anyway, and by the next morning, that thing was hurting. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm already, I believe I received my healing. I'm, I'm already doing, you know, my thing here. And whoa, boy, by the time that morning service was over, I, I was in real pain. And it's, and it's creeping up my leg. And it got to the place by the evening service on Monday evening, it was the worst pain I had ever suffered up to that time. And equal with the second worst pain I've ever suffered in my life. <clears throat> Amen. And I, whoa, I'd step out on the platform, the anointing would manifest, and I wouldn't feel a thing. 
I mean, just preach and teach and, you know, just, just enjoy myself and just having a big time. I would know it sometimes between the edge of the platform and the door. One time I screamed out loud before I could catch it. It just hit me, just blindsided me before I could get out the door. I fought that thing for three weeks. And I, confessing, 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 preaching. I'm preaching healing, you understand? You can change your subject right quick. When you need healing, preach healing. Glory to God. And so, anyway, I uh, laid down across the bed between services that afternoon, and I said, Lord, I've missed it here. You, you can't miss it. Your word is true. Your word is right. If anybody's out of line, here's me. I'm off base here someplace. I'm, I'm not made my connection. What, what, what's happening here? Prayed in the spirit there for a while. And the Lord took me back to the scripture. Let them not depart from your eyes. He said, you've been quoting scriptures, quoting healing scriptures, quoting them and quoting them and quoting them and quoting them. He said, you've let them depart from your eyes. <coughs> and he said, the memory of a potato will not nourish you. You can remember what it looks like, smells like, and tastes like, but you have to get it in the system before it'll do you any good. Amen. You have to get it in the system. Well, I mean, what's the difference if, if doctor prescribes a medicine for you and, and, um, and, and you, you call him and you said, there's something wrong with, with this medicine. I, I, I mean, I had the prescription filled and, and, and all, and I, if anything, I'm getting worse. He said, well, ha have you been taking it? Well, no, no, I, but I've got it sitting right there on my bed stand right next to, I mean, it's sitting right there. I look at it three times a day. It don't say look at it three times a day. It said take it three times a day. It's not going to do you any good in the bottle. You got to get it in the system. Jesus said, Matthew 4, 4, you remember he said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Huh? So that God is saying his word feeds the human spirit the way natural food feeds the physical body. What happens when you feed the physical body? Why do you feed the physical body? because you eat physical food that produces physical strength. Amen. So as you expend strength, then there comes a time that it has to be replaced. So you have, you, you have to go eat to replace it. The same thing is true spiritually. You have to feed on the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You have to feed on the Word of God to produce a spiritual strength called faith. Amen? Amen. Put that Word in your eyes, ears, out your mouth until it gets into your heart for, and then protect it. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. That word issue is translated forces. Out of your spirit being are the forces of your life the spiritual forces that your flesh must have in order to live. So protect it. 
I mean, don't let junk go going in your eyes. Don't you let junk start coming into your ears. Get out of the presence of people that just taught doubt and sickness and disease all the time. And you say something about faith and they say, ah, oh, that faith stuff, I tried that and it didn't work. No, it tried you and you didn't work. And you go to a service somewhere and, and, and you know, announce we're going to talk about faith. Oh, is he going to talk about faith again? Dear Lord, I've heard that. No, you didn't hear it. Or you'd come back to the table. Now, we're going to have bacon and eggs again this morning. I ate bacon and eggs. Oh, let's see. Uh, when was that? I believe that was October of 1991, I think. <laughs> Didn't care much for it. You want me to tell you? Let me, let me put it this way. I can cut this real short. What if you only ate food when you went to church. You starved to death. You want me to tell you why people's faith is weak? You feed your body three hot meals a day and your spirit one cold snack a week. Particularly if you go into a church that don't, that, that don't preach you anything that'll feed your faith. Amen. I said, amen. amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now then, I'm talking to myself. You, you understand? I'm, <laughs> you get busy. You don't spend the time. It's just a little old thing here, you know. Uh, and after all that, that uh, Sunday night, it didn't hurt all that bad, but I thought it was going to kill me by the time I got through with that meeting. And I should have immediately gone right to my room and got my Bible. Here's something I learned from Brother Hagin. I should have, before I turned the light out, go through my Bible and look at all, put, the, put into my eyes all the healing scriptures and then meditate on them for at least an hour and then turn the light out, sleep for an hour, wake up and do it over again and then turn the light out and sleep for another hour and do it over again. Feed your faith. Feed it. Meditate on it. Feed it. Jump on that demon while he's, why, before he can get his hooks into you. Hallelujah. And then just take the Word of God and, and you know, let the Word fight its own fight take that sword of the Spirit and say, Here, devil, hold this! <laughs> Just jam it to the hilt. And every time the thing starts coming back, you rattle that sword a little bit. He'll flee. He is so frightened of you, you have no idea how frightened he is of you and the authority you have in the name of Jesus. But when your faith is feeble, he'll, and he'll mess with your mind every way he can. But when it comes right down to it and it takes hold in you and you get in the name of Jesus, he'll run like a scared dog. Amen. I'm going to take you through, and don't, don't attempt to look these scriptures up. I, I'm going to read them to you and, and feed your faith right now. You can write the the scripture references down. I especially like Isaiah 35, three through six. Strengthen ye the weak hands, make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, fear not, your God will come. Well, of course, that was, that, that's in Isaiah. So you and I can say this, our God has come with vengeance and recompense. He has saved you. The eyes of the blind see, the ears of the deaf hear, 
the lame man leaps like a deer and the tongue of the dumb sings. <laughs> Amen. Genesis 6, 3, the days of man shall be 120 years. Proverbs 10, 7, the memory of the just is blessed. Isaiah chapter 53, beginning with verse 4, he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The words grief and sorrows, the Hebrew text is, he hath borne our sicknesses, diseases, weaknesses, and pains. Now, people get upset because the King James translated was translated grief and sorrow. No, 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 no. Don't go there. Don't get upset with that. No, no, no. He bore your griefs. You don't need to be grieving about anything. I mean, grief is a killer. The Word says, sorrow not. It says that. Amen. Sorrow not. We're not people without hope. You need to be resistant. And I'm going to tell you something while I'm on this. Glory to God. Do you know what the suffering of the, of the saints is? Do you know what our part of suffering is? And there is... The, the righteous suffer. This ain't an easy walk. No, we suffer. Do you remember the scripture that it says that Jesus learned obedience by what he suffered? Jesus had to learn obedience. Yeah, because if you just go down a couple of more verses there, it says he suffered being tempted. He had never been tempted in his existence until he put that body of flesh on and came into this earth. My boy, my goosebumps is double parked. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. That went all over me. Now, our suffering, now listen to me carefully because I, I, we're, just, we're about to kill graveyard dead, an old religious cow. We're going to knock this heifer right between the eyes right now. There was one guy, every time I'd go to their church, he'd stand up and sing, spare me nothing. Spare me nothing that you bore on the cross if it'll make me closer to you. That's blasphemous. You're not qualified to bear what he bore on that cross. That's just not natural religious thinking. We're going to stop that right now. The suffering of the born again child of God is to resist steadfastly in the faith everything that Jesus bore on that cross. He bore sin, we resist it with every fiber of our being. He bore our sicknesses, we resist it. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.